All right, today we're going to do a how-to video on a plenum spacer install for a 350Z or G35. Our lead technician, uh, Zach Frankenreiter, is gonna be walking us through the whole process. Um, he does, I mean, probably one of these a week, so uh, he's done them so many times. He's really good with it. All right. So in this car we had in, we're gonna install plenum spacer, but we figured we'd film it for you guys just because it's a really popular thing with uh, 350Zs and uh, G35s and whatnot. So, a um, couple things you're gonna need. Uh, got this eight mil just for some hose clamps. This for the other style of hose clamps that aren't worm gears. And then we got 10 millimeter. Uh, that's just for all the bolts that go to uh, the plenum. There's a whole bunch of those. I uh, got valve car gaskets and uh, spark plugs. I'm doing that at the same time, so you don't have to worry about that, but it's just easier to do those at the same time when you have the plenum off. Um, and then here's our kit from Z1. We have um, the other gasket, and then this is the plenum spacer right here. And then this is all the hardware that they include. Uh, with this being a little bit bigger thickness, you need uh, different bolts, longer bolts. And then uh, we're probably gonna put some RTV or they give, give you little washers up top so they seal real nice. So um, with getting started here, um, this is a little bit set up different than a completely stock G37 or BQ. So this doesn't have an engine cover, but if you do have one, you gotta pull that off. It's just a couple 10 mil bolts. So we don't have to do that, but on this one, it has a different intake system. So first thing we're gonna do is unplug the mass airflow. Um, and then I already loosened these hose clamps. Super simple, just pop these loose. They're eight millimeters on this car. Um, so after you got these loose, there's a pipe right here. So this will come out here all nice. Just make sure you got that mass airflow uh, unplugged. So with that on, pretty much we're already halfway there. Um, you got a whole bunch of bolts. There's a vacuum line here on the back. But um, if you look at this plenum, you got a whole bunch of different 10 mils right here, 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 here. And then you got a series of six right here that go all the way through. So pretty much just take 10 millimeter and pop all these off here. We have this port right here. Let's see if I can get this with my hands. There we go, that's off. Right back here on the, behind the throttle body, we've got another vacuum line and then unplug the throttle body. It's just a standard connector. It's a pretty big one actually. Let's see if I can get it. So after taking your 10 mil and removing all the bolts, there's so many, I like to double check just in case, um, just cause you can miss one every once in a while. But uh, we got the ones back here. Um, yeah, we got all the bolts. So if you go ahead and shimmy it, It'll pop loose here. Um, so probably the hardest thing about this is you have uh, coolant lines going to uh, two ports on the throttle body. So those are pretty hard to get to. So um, sometimes I like to move this a little bit um, to get a little bit better space to get in there. One, this one. Let's see if I can get this hose clamp off. Reach down with your pliers, and then trick I like to use. Um, if you got some vice grips, nothing too harsh, but uh, I got these small ones. And then what you can do is uh, just clamp down on this hose here, and uh, nothing like super tight. But uh, if you go ahead and clamp that it won't leak coolant through. So that way we're not spilling coolant all over the ground when we're doing this. And this one pops off. And we're gonna swing around to the other side here. And there's one more down here in the back. You can see I can take this whole plenum and move it so I can get more room back here because doing this way back here with the plenum on, it's gonna be a huge pain. We reach down here, getting our hose clamp. 
pop that off. I got another one of these just in case, and you don't have to use these either. If you want to plug them with a bolt or whatnot, that's also doable. Get that a little tighter. Pop it on down. Pop that off. And that's everything holding this plug on. All right, so through the magic of editing and whatnot, we got the spark plugs replaced and new valve covers on here. So I uh, went ahead and put this uh, other part of the intake on. This is all torqued down again. So now comes our second half of the plenum install. With the Z1 kit, we have this uh, plenum spacer and then the gasket that they include. Um, to line it up here, I normally go ahead and there's just a cutout right here for this um, stud, then another one over here uh, with gaskets. Um, normally, we'd go ahead and put a new gasket on, but this one's looking pretty all right, so we're really not too worried about that. So, put this on. Gonna go ahead and line this up. Boom, right here. And if you want to put a little silicone on here, you can. Um, everything's looking clean here, um, so I'm not really too worried about it, but if it's something you want to do, for sure, that'll go ahead and seal it as well. The top of the manifold here is going on. Um, one thing that we need to do is connect these ports, coolant ports here to the throttle body that we took off earlier. So that 90, this one's at the back of the motor here. So without damaging the gasket, I'm just gonna rest this here. Down. That line is on. And then we gotta flip over to this side. And this is where we can run into a couple issues too. Because this other line has to fit all the way underneath the throttle body here. So we're going to go ahead and slide that on. Pops right on. And then these vice grip clamps that are holding the coolant right now, just pop those off. Line's completely good right there. And we got one on the other side. Down here. Pop that off. That way we're not leaking coolant all over the place. And all I got is clamps. All right, with our plenum on, we're gonna go ahead and need the hardware. We have studs here and here to line everything up. Uh, with the kit, they say you can leave them in here and it's honestly easier like this. So we're just gonna leave them in like this for the install. It's not gonna affect anything. Um, but we need these six bolts, the factory ones, the longest three, we're gonna go ahead and put these seals that they include from the kit. And then they also include three longer ones. And we also went ahead and put the three seals on there. The long ones are gonna go in the top here. And we're not gonna tighten these down yet because we need to go ahead and start threading in the other bolts. And the longer ones that they include go up front because this side of the plenum spacer is a little bit thicker than the back side. Then there's two more and I'm gonna go ahead and since we don't have any more hardware from the kit, this one's one of the factory ones, fits right back there. And then we got a couple different options for this back one. Okay, it looks like we started the threads for all the bolts, so we're not gonna have any issues there. I'm not gonna tighten this, but we're just gonna feed them. See that? So with all those being nice and seated, we're gonna go ahead and actually torque these down first. Starting in the middle. All right, without that, with that out of the way, we got this back one right here. 
And then I'm gonna start over here and go around this way. You can do it in a star pattern, but um, the intake manifold's already seated, so. And after all that, you got your plenum spacer installed. All we have left is to put the intake man or the intake piping on here. And then one thing that they do include in the kit that this car does not have is um, sometimes you have a strut tower brace depending on um, what kind of car you have, like a 350Z, they have strut tower braces that go right here. So with the plenum spacer, it actually um, will rub right here. So that's why they include these washer shims. And um, they tell you in the instructions, but basically with that strut tower brace, you'll go ahead and put these washers down and it'll shim the whole, uh, the whole strut tower brace up so it's not rubbing against your plenum. But we got pipe right here. We got this clamp with the hose. Slide that on. Then our mass airflow connector is down here. Can't forget this or else your car is gonna run like crap. So popping that on. Let's grab these. And then we got two more things here. Then with the factory intake system, you'll have this air box and whatnot. Um, pretty self-explanatory on, on that, really not much different. Um, sometimes we'll have a hose that comes down here um, and goes on that pipe, but um, just one more hose clamp and you're ready to go for the most part. One more bolt here. Make sure your intake pipe's not flopping around solid and uh, yep, there's your install. It's pretty much ready to start up, so.